Hey there fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today what we're going to talk about are personas. For those of you that do not know what a persona is, a persona is a fake person that companies use in order to represent a typical type of customer, okay? Because a lot of times what companies will do in their segmentation, I mean, you all know segmentation when you divide up the market, we might have, oh, we have our Southern market and our Northern market. We might have our European market and our America's market, or we might have high income or medium income. We might have college educated, not college educated. You have these kind of dividing lines, right? And so you divide up your market, you segment them. But the thing is, is, is think of it this way. Which do you think can be much more of a tailored message? If I'm talking to male, 35 to 45, salary between 50 and 100,000. Okay, I mean, don't you feel special if I say, hey, hey, person watching the internet between the ages of 18 and 45, I have a thing that's just right for you. You're like, uh, no, it's kind of a wide range. So what we do is we develop these personas. This is when you have Mark Keneally, 40 years old, a hospital tech making $60,000 a year, who has six kids and likes to show his family the world. Well, don't you know by knowing that Mark Keneally, you're like, wait, I could make stuff that represents him. I can have Facebook posts and Instagram pictures and stuff like that and ad campaigns that really relate to Mark Keneally and his situation, right? I can do that. And that's why you develop these personas. It makes it easier for you to personify your typical customer or typical types of customers. So you can talk to Mark Keneally and not just like, male 35 to 45 so you have that okay so you have to think about those things and the thing is is companies when they use personas they don't just make one persona you can have dozens and dozens of personas it just depends how much money and time you want to spend on developing those personas so i usually say it's like look if you're a company you should have three to five a small company you should have three to five personas who are your three to five typical clients. I mean, think about it for restaurants. Who are their typical clients? You know, they could have, you know, middle aged Mark who brings his family in once a week and they eat like crazy and they eat 19 bags of chips, but they always make sure they get six margaritas. Like, okay, I know there's that family Mark, you know, midlife Mark, right? And then we've got, we've got Margarita Mitch. Margarita Mitch is our client that just comes in for those special deals, right? Oh, I can really set up some, some, some posts for them, some advertising for them, some marketing mix for them, right? And so we're kind of thinking about those things. So it's really important when you're developing these things to make sure you're doing a lot of research to figure out who are those typical people that fit into one of these personas because you want to create those personas. And so when we're trying to develop these personas, how, how do we do it? How do we build up these personas? Well, you have to do a lot of research. You need to be tracking your typical clients, all of your clients, seeing what their usual habits are, how, what websites do they visit? What, 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 how do they get their information? Did, did they cut the cord years ago or do they still pay for cable? Do they listen to the radio? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on all of them? You're doing a lot of reach research out there to really break down all the different kind of facets that your personas could be based off of and so we look at is who are these customers what is their customer journey what are the things they're doing in terms of getting this end product that you sell right i mean i sell travel videos right and so the journey people have will be very different if they're a family with a lot of little kids or they're retirees or they've got a puppy who's trying to get out the back door right you have all these different things you're going to think about and i could have a persona for each one i could have millennial mike right who's 35 years old he's a stay-at-home dad with six kids I could have Boomer Bill, who's 75, a retiree, day trades during the day, takes two trips a year around the world and wants to take his grandkids, right? And I can see, wow, there's different things that would attract to them. We've got midlife Mark, whose puppy is trying to get out here because he wants to be with me. Oh, so we might have stuff that would fit for the people traveling with their pets, right? And so you've got to do all this kind of research. And so based on what we're selling, we want to think about where do these personas have issues? Like where could our product add value to them? Where could we be helping out with our product or service? That's what we're trying to do because we want to make sure this persona might have a specific issue that we could help them out with. So millennial Mike, you know, with the six kids and staying at home, his issue, I've got to go someplace. I can take my van with my six kids in because I can't afford eight plane tickets, right? So you have this kind of stuff out there. So, hey, I'm going to figure out their problem best road trips. You know what? We have a video on the don'ts of road trips. 
10 things you need to know before you take a road trip. How to get the most out of a family vacation. Right, we've got that there for them. Okay, that's their problem we're solving, right? And so you kind of think about those things. But it's not just thinking about what their problems are and who they are, you almost have to think about what motivates them. What gets them to turn left or turn right? You know, when you're sitting at the gas station and you're on the highway and you're, you're going down, you take the exit and, and one fast food place is to the left and one's to the right, what gets people to turn that left or that right? Is it is it the food? Is it the value? Is it the family friendliness? Is it the cheese curds? What is it? You're trying to think about that motivation people have. and so. We also look at that motivation, sometimes the media that they use, that is part of the motivation. Because no matter what, if, if Wendy's is advertising on MySpace, I'm never gonna see it, I don't go to MySpace. TikTok, the only TikTok I get is my kids sends them to me, all right? So they're not getting me there. Ah, but if it shows up on the gram, right? Or it shows up on Facebook or YouTube, I might see it there. And so, hey, that might motivate me to go that way because I saw it. So we kind of think about these things. Now, another thing you want to think about when you're developing your personas is you want to think about what do they like? What are their hobbies? What do they do for fun? And so, yeah, like I talked about Boomer Bill. Hey, Boomer Bill likes to travel, right? So he likes to go on a couple international trips a year. Also, what else does Boomer Bill do in his free time? He reads to the kids at the local you know, kindergarten so he can help them read. He likes to play golf, right? Okay, so I have an idea, right? It makes it a lot easier to have a conversation with Boomer Bill. I mean, you can imagine him in your mind already, right? And then Millennial Mike, what does he do for fun? Millennial Mike has no time for fun. He He's got six kids. He's trying to keep them up. He hasn't watched Game of Thrones. He hasn't watched Breaking Bad. I mean, he hasn't seen a real TV in years. He's been watching, you know, uh, Animal Mechanical and 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 and, and what what are, the, what are the other kids' things I had to watch with my kids? Dragons, Race to the Edge, and and, and all those Nickelodeon shows. Oh, Peppa Pig! Please leave me alone, Peppa Pig. Oh my God. <laughs> but the thing is, is that's who's been watching. So we realize, wait. His free time isn't his free time. His free time's with his kids. So if we're gonna get Millennial Mike to go out to the movie theater, he's gotta make sure it's kid friendly because he has to drag his six kids with them. Ha ha! And so we figure these things out. And the thing is, it's not just figuring out what your personas, what your typical clients like, it's also figuring out what they don't like. I mean, how many of you have bought something at a store and you made the mistake of giving them your email and you get like an email every single day? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Old Navy. Oh my gosh, you get their email once, you get like, oh, our daily deal, daily deal. Dude, I don't buy clothes every single day, right? And we start to see this turns them off. These are things they don't like. And so we realize, hey, with these things we don't like, we mean there are these things that they don't like, we need to make sure we're not doing them, okay? Oh, I see my little puppy got out. Oh, who's my little doggy? Yes. And then we have to look at when are they actually going to buy our product? When are they likely to buy our product and service? What's gonna be that kind of instigating factor that's gonna get them to reach out and buy or buy something like ours? We really have to do our research in that. And then figuring out is what are those key kind of really important attributes that get them to remember, turn left or turn right? We have to think about that. So when we try to develop these personas, how do we get all this information? Well, the thing is, it's gonna take you a lot of time. I'm not gonna to lie to you. Developing personas is time consuming and money consuming and life consuming, Ugh. but it really pays off in the end, okay? But when you think about it, you have all kinds of qualitative data, right? I mean, how many of you have worked retail and you know when someone walks in, you know they're buying, they're not gonna buy. Or you worked at a restaurant, you know they're gonna be a big tipper, they're not gonna be a big tipper. You already know that. You have that information that you're pulling together. So our perspective on things, our previous interactions with clients and, and their, how they've acted. Also, we can look at how people look at their purchase because for some places, you know, it might not be a fancy restaurant to you, but it might be a fancy restaurant to somebody else. Some people, they travel all the time and some people, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So we're doing this kind of you know, research to figure out what things mean to people. I mean, think about it, college education. What does that college education mean to people qualitatively? For the parents out there, it's I'm getting my kid out of my house. For students, it's I'm getting out of the house to have fun. There's a different way they're looking at things, okay? Now the thing is, there's not just qualitative data, there's also 
quantitative data. You have the numbers out there. You can look at the online profiles. You can look at the things people have bought before. We can track all this stuff and that can give us an idea because you can actually see consumers purchasing habits. I see for me, look, people watch travel videos on the weekend, not during the week. So I know that, hey, I need to have that customer journey ready. So when they're on the weekend, ready to travel and ready to look up stuff, we got new videos for them, right? When it comes to business videos, people want to learn business Monday through Thursday on the weekend they're like bye bye mark bye bye professor walters don't want to have anything to do with you and the thing is is when we look at this we're really looking at all the different touch points that are out there remember this customer journey we've talked about and stuff like that we want to really think about is wait what are all those touch points where we could be adding value to these personas that we could actually have an impact in their lives, an impact in their purchasing decision, an impact in their customer journey. And so we're doing all that research, right? And that's why, you know, Boomer Bill, how, where, where could we be helping them out? Oh, he's watching YouTube on his TV because his son got him the Roku stick. You're welcome, dad, okay, to do those things. Whereas Millennial Mike, when is he doing his research? He's doing his research on his phone when he's waiting to pick up his kids in the school parking lot, you know, being there a half hour early hey, what does that mean I need to do? And so we start looking at these things. And so by creating all these personas, all this research and all this data, it helps us create more of a, I'm not gonna say they're perfect, but a better representation of a typical customer. And so when we talk to, you know, when I make a comment towards, you know, Boomer Bill, or I make a comment to Millennial Mike, it's really talking to them. Now, you might not be Millennial Mike and you might not be Boomer Bill, but some of those things that relate to that, you can actually see, so wow, you're actually talking to a person versus, you know, those generic posts you see on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, you're like, who are you talking to? What, is, what the hell is that, right? And so you kind of think about these things. And the thing is, is when you're developing these personas, you might actually ask for feedback from your current customers to get a better idea of what's important to them, right? Just to build up more information about these people that will then turn into these personas. Because I've got to say, I've given you a kind of a generic version of these personas. I mean, you can go very, very much in depth with them because think about it in terms of the products you're gonna sell, you might look at your personas in terms of the typical products they buy or the typical services they buy, how they perceive your product. I mean, those Bose headphones, are those a status symbol or are those a way for you to truly enjoy the great music that's out there, right? And so there's gonna be some differences there. And the thing is we use these personas to kind of craft the content that's perfect for them, that's there to reach out to those personas and really talk to them versus, you know, kind of shouting to the air into random people, okay? Because for all the Karens out there that people like to talk about, I mean, that is kind of a persona. You have this idea of, oh, it's a Karen. Well, you have an idea of what Karen wants, what Karen worries about, what Karen, care, Karen cares about, right? You have that. You're doing that same thing, but for your actual clients. Because we do use these personas to tailor our social media posts, our digital marketing, our website, our email outreach. You'll use personas in order, in terms of what kind of ads you're gonna put into different things. Because we see, oh, Boomer Bill reads Bloomberg Magazine and Millennial Mike is reading GQ. I might have a different, I will have a different ad set for GQ versus on Bloomberg because I'm targeting a different persona with each one of those medias, okay? So you have to think about these things. And, and I'll be honest, developing your social media post in a way where you're actually talking to someone, even if it's one of these personas, is talking to that, you know, perfect Patricia or very hardworking Victoria, tailoring it to them makes it a much more human post than it is some kind of, you know, what basically appears to be some kind of chat bot saying your post, okay? So I hope this helps you give you an overall idea of what personas are and how you can use them. They are extremely effective. We actually have an exercise you can do to develop your own personas. And as the, and as the wind picks up here, I probably need to let you go, but I hope this helps you know a bit more about personas. Honestly, if you're a small business, have three to five personas that you've developed so you can have a way to talk to them, a menu for them, an outreach to them, the kind of posts you have on your social media, all these things will be greatly impacted if you use these personas, okay? Because they represent your real typical kinds of clients. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, Put in the comment sections below. And if you use personas, what are some of the ones that you use? Let us know as well. And I'll say bye from here in my backyard with my dog. Bye.